Bolivia has gone from having the first indigenous president to having Latin America's first woman dictator. At the moment, there is lots of repression by the security services. With the reported 24 people murdered so far. One of the key actors in this coup is Luis Fernando Camacho, a multimillionaire far-right lawyer who entered the presidential palace with a pasta. The pasta said that God now was effectively in charge of Bolivia and indigenous rights was a thing of the past. This Camacho figure has ties to the far-right neo-Nazi paramilitary groups. Janine Añez, the new dictator of Bolivia, has also ties to far-right groups. There is a very big fanatical religious component to this coup. There is also a very big racial element. You've seen members of the security forces ripping down the indigenous flag from their own uniforms. Around 40% of Bolivians are classified as indigenous. Morales was Bolivia's first indigenous president and there is a long-standing confrontation between the more whiter skinned Bolivians who oppose his policies of empowering the indigenous marginalized population. We saw in the run-up to the coup really distressing images of a socialist pro-Morales mayor being tortured publicly, nearly lynched, doused in paint and had her hair cut off. And this is symptomatic of the violence being unleashed by the right in Bolivia. The head of the Senate, Adriana Salvatierra, who should really have become president according to the Bolivian constitution, was denied entry violently by the security forces who physically assaulted her. The head of the armed forces in Bolivia is someone that was trained along with at least five other key military that involved in the coup in the US in a military training academy that used to be called the School of the Americas, an infamous training academy which has trained some of the most brutal human rights abuses that Latin America has ever seen. It's also worth noting, Bolivia has 70% of the world's recognized lithium reserves. Lithium has been called the fuel of the future, needed for things like electric cars. In Chile, the number one producer of lithium, the government has almost given away its lithium industry to Western multinationals. In Bolivia, Morales was trying to cut deals with the Chinese firms to add value to lithium production. This was happening just in the months prior to the coup. There is a kind of cold war going on between the West and China. Only recently at the UN, Evo Morales gave a strident denunciation of Trump to his face, something which is very rarely done. Policies that were enacted under the Evo Morales government led to almost tripling of the economy, led to an expansion in healthcare, in education, in other areas which benefited those that had been previously marginalized and exploited. Any government that tries to reclaim its natural resources for the benefit of its population get identified for regime change. There seems to be an attempt to downplay the fact that it was a coup. You've had the Wall Street Journal almost celebrating the coup. We've even had the most ridiculous headline in the Australian saying that the new woman president, Janine Agnes, is a woman activist, almost saying that she stepped into a power vacuum following the 20th of October elections, which Morales won. Opponents and others have said that Morales didn't win this election. There were weeks of violence in the streets. Morales agreed to call for new elections. In the end, the army called on him to resign without the decision of the Manuel Lopez Obrador government to send a plane and allow him to flee to Mexico. I think Morales' life would have been in serious danger. There is the issue of the 2016 referendum on indefinite re-election, which Morales lost very narrowly. After that result, in 2017, an electoral court effectively said that Morales could run for re-election. This has been widely criticized. However, this in no way justifies the violent right-wing racist coup that has taken place and the violence being unleashed on Morales supporters by the new dictatorship. So the US has recognized the post-coup regime, uh, as has Britain, but we've also seen solidarity from people like Jeremy Corbyn in the UK, Bernie Sanders in the US. At the end of the day, it was the military who intervened in that process and asked them to leave. When the military intervenes, well, hey, in my view, that's called a coup. And others who recognize that what's happened in Bolivia is a coup and can in no way be defended. There has been a resurgence of openly fascist figures like Bolsonaro in Brazil, in Latin America, and the new forces leading the Bolivian coup are very much in that spirit. Bolivians will continue to resist. The hope is that the dictatorship will be defeated and Bolivian democracy can reassert itself. Mainstream media are not properly reporting what's going on in Latin America. It's essential that people look for information elsewhere. That's why media outlets like Double Down News are essential for people today wanting to know what's really going on. So support the future of journalism and support Double Down News on Patreon.